Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to share with you a little secret that your Z-axis is lying to you. Yep, I'm afraid so. And what do I mean by that? Well, one of the things that you've probably heard, especially if you're newer or even intermediate in 3D printing, is that there's usually several different bands of layering which, which we print in. So you hear, hear somebody say, well, I printed that at point 0.1, I printed that at point 0.2, I printed that at point 0.3, and that's sort of the common denominators for the different layering heights. And you may even see this in some of the instruction manuals. But did you know that a lot of z-axis cannot print at a lot of those layer heights? That's the truth, my friends. They've been lying to you. And I'm here to kind of set the record straight. Now, where did this come from? Well, I want to thank viewer Nate for actually bringing this up. So, uh, this is something he commented on my uh, first layer post about overextrusion. And while I still think the overextrusion still holds true, he brought up a little piece that I think is interesting to share that not a lot of folks realize it. And actually, the only reason I realize it is because I also work in the CNC community. And, uh, and, and basically, what that is, is if you look at your Z-axis, because most 3D printers, you know, the X and Y are bell-driven, but the, the Z-axis is typically a lead screw. Now, what happens in that lead screw is it makes, you have a stepper motor, which makes so many turns, and then it turns that uh, lead screw and it pushes the um, extruder or gantry up or table down, or basically moves your Z-axis. Access in, in the Z plane. Well, the piece is it's bound by certain mechanical parameters. Now we really don't talk about it because it kind of comes back to the the lower dimensional accuracy of 3D printing versus C CNCing. In the CNC world, you get very very detailed down to thousands of a millimeter net, and this is why in the CNC world it's very important to know the pitch and everything of your lead screws to determine movements and tool pathings and a lot of other important things. But in 3D printing, especially since the uh, lead screw is only really used on the Z-axis, this is really overlooked. So I tell you what, what I'd like to do first before I get into some of the numbers here is let's run a bit of a time lapse. I'm going to do it about 30-45 seconds. I don't want to bore you too much. However, what I've done is I'm going to normalize a video of four different prints, basically these cubes you see down here. And what I've done is I've set up on my Z axis on my Creality sort of some markers. Now kind of watch as they go through and again it won't be more than about 30 to 45 seconds because you can only watch them spin for so long before your eyes glaze over but I just really want you to take a look. So what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, point 0.1, point 0.2, point three and some unknown as the fourth. So we'll look at the four of those together and then we'll meet back here at the bench and then we'll talk about the statistics down here. So let's head over to the time lapse. Okay, welcome back. So, kind of boring stuff, but mm, I think you'll see the point in a minute. So I just wanted you to get perspective of the movement of the uh, Z lead screw. So what, what I want to talk about here though, and I want to kind of preface this, is I'm going to keep this a little bit high level. So I, I'm, I'm an author, and one of the things a long time ago a publisher told me is they said, Joe, for every page of equations you have in a book, you'll lose a thousand sales because people just tune out. So again, this has a little bit of math. I've simplified it. So if you're real deep into this, uh, please understand I'm keeping this digestible. So uh, anyways, let's jump into it. So one of the things as I went through and I printed these test cubes, I want to move this one out of the way. So 
you, the astute observer will notice right off the bat, I probably need to adjust the steps on my z-axis because I'm continually missing because what I have here is a 20 by 20 cube. And so, as you see, and this is where the big focus is going to be, is on the Z. So at 0.1 layer height, I've got 19.3. At 0.2, I've got 19.4. And at 0.3, I've got 19.7. So you see something interesting already building here. So 19.3, 19.4, then 19.7. As I start going up in size, my layer height, my cube starts growing. So I'm still not making my entire 20 millimeters. But I'm starting to get closer as the layer height is changing. Now, one of the things, if we look through here on the Y, it's pretty contiguous. So I've got 20.1, 20.1, 20.2, again, 19.7, 19.8, 20.1. Hmm, that's all very interesting. Why is part of this? Now, one of the things, again, I'm kind of keeping this high level. You also have expansion and contraction of the plastic, too. So that's going to factor in. Now, I use PLA for this, so I don't have a lot of it. So when you begin looking at this, it starts to get interesting. Why is that? Well, on the reality, one of the things on the lead screw, and I'll show you guys in a future video how to determine this for yourselves, is one revolution of the stepper motor produces 8 millimeters of travel on the hot end. So if the motor turns once, the hot end goes up eight millimeters. So it takes 200 steps to turn that one time. So 200, 200 steps equals um, eight millimeters. So if we divide this out down here, so if I take eight, eight millimeters divided by 200, that means one step equals 0 0.04 millimeters. Now, very important, a stepper motor cannot make a half a step. It must make a full step. And so this is the important part. So when we now begin looking at the measurement, so if I take 0 0.01 millimeters divided by 0 0.04, that equals 2.5 steps. The Creality cannot make, or any stepper motor for that matter, cannot make 2.5 steps. It's got to make two steps or it's got to make three steps. So I have an error now in this. My firmware has to do something with this information it's being given because it cannot complete it. So it's either going to have to add or throw away steps. Now if we go to 0.2 millimeters, I have, I divide that by 0 0.04, that equals five steps. That's an even number. I can make five steps. The stepper motor can make five steps. So I can complete that dimensionally accurate. Now, if I go to point 0.3, again, I run into the same problem as point 0.1, is dividing it by point 0.04, I end up with 7.5 steps. So I can't complete 7.5. I have to go 8 or I have to go 7. No 7.5. And this is why we're starting to see, as we start getting into the larger numbers, why we're starting to see some of the errors in movement. And obviously, the more error we have and the greater distance of movement, the greater that's going to add up. So this is why I've done this little chart here. So it's kind of interesting, is I've got this little chart. So I, if we look at point, uh, zero, point 0.1, point 0.2, as we have up here, we've got 19.3, 19.4, then we jump to 19.7. So, what if we reverse this to say, what is the closest I can come to 0.3? And that happens to be 2.8. So, if I take 0.28, divide that by 0 0.04, I get 7 steps. I can make 7 steps. So, that's what this cube is. That's what this guy is here. So, you notice when I printed this guy, I came out with 19.5, which fits in very nicely here. In this graph so I'm 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 just the way the numbers worked out now there's several things that's going to be um, uh, affecting this number so I know some people are going to write expansion of the plastic and, and you're partly right but what's happening is we're seeing a bit of accumulation of error because 0 0.2 is going to be a pretty good sweet spot uh, again 2.8 is going to be another sweet spot. E3 is going to be an outlier. So this is one of the things that's real important. Now in general um, I'm going to say uh, dimensional abilities of a 3D printer you know going 
point one, point two, point three is pretty common because you know if we're a little bit off here or there, half a millimeter between friends isn't a big deal typically. But now if you're working this as part of a job shop where you need a very uh, you know a, a model that's that's dimensionally very correct or as correct as you can get it, you're going to really want to be taking a look at all your axes and making sure that you're within these tolerances of what it's physically capable of delivering and especially the z-axis now belts are a little bit more forgiving and a little bit different than lead screws um, this also gets quite a bit more complex than what i'm sharing here because you also have the pitch of the lead screw which is going to uh, uh, change the velocity at which your gantry or hot end also moves. I'm not going to get into that right now because that's a whole nother ballywake and the degrees of the lead screw and things like that but I did want to share this because Nate made a very good point it, because again when we're printing with these things why are we off because again you may come back and say well I need to change my steps per this or that but again if you're coming up with an odd number of steps you, you're never going to get there that's always going to be problematic and again you know, if you're new to 3D printing, I wouldn't worry too much about this as you progress on. And if you're in the job shop world and you want to get a very detailed model, I would definitely concern myself with this and many more. So, um, uh, Perus has got a real nice calculator out there that, that Nate turned me on to. Again, big thanks to Nate for this. Uh, I didn't know that was out there. I knew about this. And so I'll put that link below and I'll put some more information on this also below. But I wanted to share this little secret with you because I don't think too many people know about it. And if you're going to print low poly Pikachus or Darth Vader masks or something like that, this really doesn't matter. But if you're going to print dimensionally accurate parts for uh, mock-ups, a job shop, or what have you, you want to be here. So hopefully you found this interesting and enlightening. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. I'll be doing a couple more videos on this in the near future, showing you how to figure out uh, your lead screw numbers. In sort, so you can sort that out and probably a couple other pieces. But anyways, Swag Shop's going to be up there. Hit me up in the comments below and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.